It's not every day that a pop punk band gets the opportunity to clear the allegations made against them. But that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about the all-time low situation. But before we do, hey, hi, hello, my name is Dan Frampton, welcome to the channel. Hit like, press subscribe, and comment within the first three hours to secure your spot in the three-hour gang. It's a very rare occurrence that pop punk allegations get cleared, but here we are, so let's talk about it. Before we actually dive into this story, I just want to make it abundantly clear. Even though this situation deals with false allegations and people lying on the internet, if you have stories of SA, if you have stories that have happened to you and feel comfortable enough to talk about them and bring them to light, I just want to say I know how much strength and courage it takes to do that kind of thing. People dismissing allegations only discourages victims from coming forward. And situations like this that we're about to discuss in this video discourage real legitimate victims even further. So if you're out here telling your story, I commend you for that bravery. But please, don't be out here lying about this kind of stuff. It serves no good and it hurts absolutely everybody, even people not in the situation. Because when I hear allegations, I listen with open ears. But it's because stories that we're about to discuss in today's video that some people are so quick to dismiss every single allegation that they hear until it's proven in court. But you know, only such a small percentage of stuff actually goes to court. This is the one incident in a long line of incidents that have actually gone to court. But it's because the band took the fans to court. But before we get into the main juice of this story, it is important to know who it is we're talking about. We're talking about All Time Low. And in 2013, the lead singer of All Time Low, musician Jack Barricat, dated a 17-year-old. Now, this isn't an allegation. E! News confirms that the couple just started dating. So this is the kind of person that we're dealing with. Kind of like an Anthony Kiedis type figure, okay? Now I can't believe that even just in 2013, dating a 17 year old was socially acceptable that f***ing E! Hollywood News is reporting on it in a positive way. Little Miss Sunshine is all grown up and has a boyfriend. They met at an all-time low show. Oh, you don't say, do you? Look at this picture. He looks like a 38-year-old and she looks 14. But as optically weird as it is, the actual ages are just as weird. 17 and 25, not a huge fan of that. But we're not here to talk about 2013. We're here to talk about the 20. 20s. And in 2021, there were three allegations made towards All Time Low. The first allegation claims that a 13-year-old was brought onto the All Time Low tour bus and inappropriate things occurred from there. The second allegation claims that Jack Barricat abused an underage person. And then the third allegation was that there are 97 allegations. When those allegations hit the internet, all Time Low had to do their best and hit the internet with a statement. But this statement wasn't really met with much warmth or positivity, okay? Here in the comments of it, people are very, very upset at All Time Low and not believing it one bit. Because they are very well aware that this 25 year old dated a 17 year old less than 10 years ago, at the time of these allegations anyway. So let's read their statement and go from there. The allegations being brought against us are absolutely and unequivocally false. When a TikTok video gained traction a few weeks ago alluding to inappropriate behavior within our camp, we chose not to respond because of the glaring inconsistencies in the story and the apparent reluctance to mention us by name. We felt that a response would have elevated and escalated an outright lie, and in doing so, robbed actual victims of abuse of their very real and very important collective voice. We believe victims. We stand with victims. We only ever want to cultivate and nurture 
a culture around our shows and band that is welcoming, healthy, and safe. It is with that in mind that we have to state with outright certainty that what is being said about us is completely and utterly false. We are investigating further the source of these allegations and will be seeking legal resource as we take these allegations very seriously. With that in mind, we want to say again that we stand with victims and always wish to amplify the voices and stories of those who have suffered abuse and trauma. We cannot and will not fuel or amplify lies that only cloud or distort the true stories of those who need to be heard and represented. We appreciate and truly never take for granted the platform that you have granted us by supporting our band and us as individuals over the years. We cannot overstate how much we respect and cherish the sanctity of our fan base and the connections we've made through the years. With every year that goes by, every show we play, every individual we meet along the way, we are so thankful for the growth that stems from this connection. We only ever sought positivity and wellness for those who have ever crossed our path. Throughout our nearly two decades spanning career, we are so fortunate to learn and grow alongside all of you. We will continue to listen and do everything in our power to nurture and support a healthy and safe environment around all time low. It is difficult and disheartening to have to make this statement knowing that these allegations against our camp are completely unfounded and false. But at this point, it is the utmost importance to us that you know we hear you. We stand with the victims and we stand collectively for truth. Sincerely with love, Alex, Jack, Ryan, and Zach. So that's the statement. Pretty basic statement for when you're getting hit with this kind of stuff. We didn't do this stuff. This kind of stuff is a lie. And we're going to do something about it. And even in these comments over here, someone pointed out that the person that posted the first allegation might have made it up. Where she says, I posted it to be petty towards a peer. We're going to get into all of that stuff in just a little bit. So stay tuned. So after that statement went out and they said that they're going to take legal action from that, that is something that they actually did. If these allegations were true, even though this guy dated a 17 year old when he was 25, it isn't really fair to perpetuate something that is a lie even though the guy is kind of a creepazoid. He should only be ridiculed for the creepy things he's actually done. So in 2022, the band filed this lawsuit right now. Here. And in it, it details everything. Of course, this is just legal jargon. I'm not going to get into all of it. But at the very bottom, we get Exhibit A, B, and C from all of the accusations. Here we have Exhibit A, which was the person that claimed they were brought onto a bus when they were 13 years old and inappropriate things happened from there. Here is the post on TikTok where they make this accusation. I'll leave this here for a second so you can have a chance to read it. And underneath this post is where they detail what the band actually did to them. And in these comments, she says that she was doing it just to be petty and that was corroborated by her friend that went to the show with her when her friend tweeted out this. I went to this concert with her and this never happened. So by her own admission, the first allegation was made up just to be petty and the friend that she went to the concert with it said yeah, it was made up. So okay, we move on. We're gonna talk about the second incident in a little bit cause it's the big one. But the third allegation was that there were 97 allegations. When Sage tweets out, I've counted 97 allegations against them. If 97 people aren't enough, I don't know what to tell you. And then followed it up with, I feel kind of weird about how people took my tweet about the all-time low situation. I didn't mean for things to go like that, so I'm probably going to stay private for a few days. What do you mean you didn't mean for it to go like that? These are allegations of very serious stuff that you're just casually saying there are 97 of them? Okay, I believe that there are 97 of them, so show me 97 of them. And then when people are like, whoa, this is crazy, I need to see all 97 of them, and then for you to just be like, oh no, this is too much, too many responses, I gotta go private. What's the sense of bringing this kind of information to the internet if it isn't to do something about it? So legally, this whole allegation was thrown out as well. But the big one was allegation number two, also known as Exhibit B. Now this one is a big story. This is the one that causes all of the drama. This one goes into so much detail in a 12-page notes app 
story. Now this is the one the band took very, very seriously that they even subpoenaed Twitter for the user that uploaded this story because it came to the internet anonymously. At first, Twitter was like, no, we are not going to give you that username. But through the legal system, however they did it, they ended up getting the names associated with this post. Now these names haven't been made public and the band is saying that they're going to handle this stuff privately, but this story here was proven to be an elaborate fabricated story by somebody posing as a fan. All Time Low's lawyer had this to say about it. There is no such person and no such incidents occurred. Rather, an investigation revealed that Doe 2 was an orchestrated smear campaign by multiple individuals as a fake fan. The investigation identified the individuals behind the anonymous post who went to great lengths to hide their identities. So through subpoenas and arbitration, appeals and back and forth, they found out legally that this statement is fake. A coordinated false smear campaign is how it's being described. So even though this dude is out here dating 17 year olds when he's 25, a smear campaign, we can't hold this story against him. But I will forever call him a creep for this one. And here's what All Time Low said after requesting the libel dismissal. This has been a challenging time for our band as we fought to clear and debunk these false and damaging online rumors. We remain deeply grateful for those who supported us throughout the legal process, including our fans, peers, and collaborators. With this case dismissed, we remain committed to continuing to foster a healthy, safe environment, both for our concerts and within our fan community. And we look forward to the next chapter of All Time Low. And that seems to be where the All Time Low situation is sitting right now. When you're going through stories of accusations and allegations and all this sort of stuff, it's very hard to piece together the actual truth and it's very rare that this stuff actually goes all the way to the legal system. And this is one of the rare cases that it actually does. So if a band clears their name legally of allegations and accusations, they can't really be accosted for them anymore. I've been Dan Frampton. That was All Time Low. Thank you so much for watching this upload. Until my next upload, watch another upload. Okay, take care and have a good one.